The concept of honoring black women made me want to be a part of um, this movie. Black women from the past, the present, and the black women who will shape the future. Um, women like Maxine Waters, uh, women like my grandmother, women like my ancestors. And I think this was a, is an important film that will speak to how the past directly uh, influences our present and our future. Um, I think I also was attracted to the themes of the film. You know, um, systemic racism, microaggressions, uh, white supremacy. And I think, especially with the time that we're in, uh, it's, it's, it's important to, to shed even more light uh, on these toxic issues. Um, the burden that black women have to carry to deconstruct uh, white supremacy uh, and racism every single day doesn't get talked about enough. And I felt like this was an opportunity to, to, to shed light uh, on, on what we're going through daily. When I was reading the script and um, thinking about Veronica and all the Veronicas that I know, uh, because she, she reminds me of, of, of so many strong, black, educated um, pillars in the community. You know, Veronica is very community oriented. Uh, what she does is not just for herself, you know, is to uplift her community, uh, to, to move black people forward uh, and to, to help us not assimilate, uh, but to be, you know, revolutionaries of our own life. And I think that I was drawn to that. I was drawn to um, just how much of a modern day superhero uh, she was and she is. And one of the other things that's super important is how she deals um, uh, with, you know, an oppressed system, system, a system that does not work for her. And I think Veronica wanting to dismantle those systems that were not built for her with us in mind uh, is, is something that we need and something that we need to see more of. Eric uh, and Jack are, are, you know, some of the best actors in the business and uh, I was super happy that I was going to get an opportunity to work with them. I knew that for everybody, you know, these roles were going to be heavy and they were going to be asking a lot of ourselves and we would have to go outside of who we are, uh, you know, as, as, as individuals. Um, when I met them, we, it was important for us to just talk. So we didn't film anything without having conversations around race, you know, around uh, oppression, around um, uh, white supremacy. We had, we, we, it was important that we went out, um, you know, it was important to the directors as well that all of us had an opportunity to connect human, and hu human to human to understand where we stood. And, and there was some really um, important and eye-opening conversations that stem from, from our talks. I was familiar with their film Against the Wall and, and the work that they had done with Jay-Z. Um, so I knew, you know, that this film was super important for them to execute and, you know, just seeing their passion for wanting to make sure that every detail was paid attention to, I really respected and appreciated that. One of the other things that was important to me is that I had black designers uh, when I was um, Veronica, you know, and she worked hard to figure out how to get, you know, local um, black owned uh, designers um, to contribute earrings and, 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 and skirts and dresses and jumpsuits. Um, so that's what I love too, is that she went out her, her way to make sure um, that uh, we were highlighting uh, you know, black designers because this is a film uh, speaking about black life. The things uh, that Antebellum deal with, the themes that this film deals with uh, are white supremacy, uh, microaggressions, systemic racism, um, and the burden that black women carry to deconstruct white supremacy and racism every day. 
Um, I think that it's even more important that we talk about these things because of the times that we are in. Uh, we are in a fight right now. We're in a real fight. And the things in this film haven't been as global as they need to be. We're seeing people wake up for the first time and address um, uh, the, the delusion of, of white supremacy. And what this film shows and what we see right now is that the past is not the past. The past is not even the past. And, and I think that will be made clear after you watch it. I think this film will make a lot of people uncomfortable. And I think that it should. I think that in order for us to grow and create something new, growth requires discomfort. And everyone is feeling it in different ways. Um, so my hope is that after folks watch this film, that it prompts them to do something about it. I think that art has a way of ministering and of getting people to have that, aha, I finally get it. You know, sometimes it doesn't work um, in a speech. Sometimes politicians, they don't, they don't articulate it or make it plain or say it in the most passionate way that you have to listen. And art does that. And that's why I love being an artist and I try to stay true to that. Even if, even if I have to go through the pain like I, I'm gonna, you know, like I'm going through in this in this film, to come out on the other side to to showcase that on screen is just something that is is remarkable and has the power to change hearts and minds everywhere. One of the, the other things that was so special about filming this movie is that I got to work with some of my favorite actors. And Kiersey Clemens is, to me, somebody that everybody should be talking more about. You know, her performance in, in here um, was just outstanding. And both of us had to really lean on each other, you know, between each take. Uh, because we understood the weight, we understood the responsibility that we had to, to portraying our characters and our ancestors. Um, and I just remember her, you know, looking at me and, and looking in those, me looking in those big, pretty eyes and finding my power. Um, yeah, finding my power. So I really love working with her. Absolutely. Uh, when Gabby and I arrived on set, everyone had just come from five weeks of filming on the plantation. And it was, you know, a nightmare what they had come from physically and psychologically and creatively. I think they, you know, it, they had to go through a lot. And we arrived fresh and ready to have some fun. And I think we infused it with uh, a lot of energy. And just immediately, you know, Gerard and Christopher had hired these two amazing powerhouses, Janelle and Gabby, and working with them, they're so talented and open and generous and playful. Um, I think this um, chemistry just, it just popped pretty quickly. Uh, you know, we had two, two big night shoots, was it? Just basically two big night shoots. And it was two five to five rooms. Yeah, and in that time, we just so quickly, we connected and we had so much fun, so. Uh, I think yeah, everything that you're seeing on screen is very real. That chemistry was real. I, I love both of those women with all my heart. Well, of course, this movie is pertinent for this moment. Uh, and this movie has been pertinent for America since the founding of America. Uh, so while it's coming at a great time for people, you know, it's, it's a wonderful way to continue a conversation and to add something creative and artistic to this dialogue. Um, I also think that it has been, you know, we have been needing this film for a long time. So um, in that respect, you know, it's, it's a timeless film for America. Just in the first three pages, I knew I had to do this, and I knew I had to be there when they're shooting, just because of how how much attention 
and time and space and really power they gave to imagery in the script alone. I knew I had to be here to see the way they would shoot that. And of course, the story is incredible and shocking and pulls you in you know, multiple directions in such an incredible way, in such an entertaining way, in such a sad way. You feel almost, almost too many things at one time. And just, you know, and I tend to read scripts as the audience, not as the player. And I, just the journey I went on sort of mentally and spiritually and physically, really, while reading, I knew I had to be a part of it. I think the happiest part of my my meeting with them was when Gerard, he held my shoulders and he said, I really, really want you to, he's like, this is just, the words for Dawn are just what they are, but you and what you bring to it is, is what only you can bring to it. So don't be afraid to play. Don't be afraid to, to go off script. Don't be afraid to turn Dawn into exactly who you see her to be. And that was really all I needed. I was gonna do that anyway, because that's just how I am. But, but it was, but having the license and the freedom to take this character that they wrote, that they created, and to sort of adopt her and raise her like she was my own, that is all the, um, I just, I needed that. I needed that license, I needed that go ahead, and that's what I got from them, and I hope that I took what they created and gave them something, um, that they couldn't create back. Diversity behind the camera, and, and in every single department, every single department means that we get to tell more of our stories, uh, and stories that you don't know even existed. There are so many things that people don't know about because they're not looking, or because those people who are knowledgeable or have lived that life that's super interesting, they don't have the mic. They don't have the mic and they don't have the camera. And so um, I know certainly as a director, I try my best to, to, I try my best to, to diversify every single department. It's a fantasy thriller, sure, but it's actually not very far away from the, from the country we actually live in. And um, I will never be tired of, of slave dramas. I will never be tired of that because that is, it's a part of my history as a black woman. It's also a part of my history as an American. It's part of my history as someone who was raised uh, by a black woman from the South. It's also a part of my history as someone who was raised by a black man from Africa. It is my history on all fronts in all parts of myself and I don't want anyone to forget it ever happened. I'm such a huge fan of Janelle as an artist. I'm a fan of her as a person but also as an artist I think what she does with her music is incredible. I think what she does with her image is incredible and special and 100% her. So I look up to her as an artist and sitting next to Lily and seeing her artistry and getting to know it and getting to witness her artistry. And finally, just a smaller piece of me knowing that I'm also an artist. It sort of, I look at us like, it just like, like Lily's a Picasso and Janelle is a Monet. And <laughs> This is her last name, <laughs> and and maybe I'm the Mona Lisa or whatever. And it just it really really is nice to be around other people who really really believe in themselves and believe in their words and believe in their artistry, and it feeds me. My first meeting with uh, Gerard and Chris, we went to lunch uh, in L.A. and um, uh, they just sort of you know, gave me their whole pitch. I had already signed on, but you know, they're, uh, they're so passionate and energetic and lovely individuals and, um, and their heart is just so wildly connected to this story and to the movie. And, you know, they have done commercials and music videos and very provocative, uh, you know, PSAs and, and, um, 
but to move into the feature world for the first time, there's something really infectious about being around people like that. Shooting on um, an actual plantation is, uh, is such an invaluable part of the story because it, I mean, really you get out of the van and you walk a couple feet and, and it's like there's no acting required. You know, everywhere you look is, is a real plantation and so there's no, um, you know, end of the facade. It's, it's there 360 degrees around you. Even the weather, you know, I find the humidity and the heat um, another character in this movie and the dust and the dirt and uh, so all of it, it's, just, it's not something you could do in California really, you know, I, I think being in the South is really um, an inherent part of, of uh, the believability of all this so that you watch the film and you truly believe it's a, it's a period of time that you're within. I'm a big fan of DPs. I, I, I like to sit behind the monitors as much as possible and just watch how they make pictures. You know, Gerard and Chris have talked from the beginning about making paintings throughout this movie that they had inspiration boards of paintings, and and to watch the Gerard and Chris work with um, Pedro on on framing these images up and the colors within them and how lush and rich and beautiful they are. That in many ways they're they're making something that looks like Gone with the Wind. It's, that's seemingly very beautiful, and underneath it is this seed of just um, horrific behavior. So to watch them manipulate colors, and, and um, you know, there's a fire in the cabin a few times, and sometimes it's a very red fire, and the whole cabin is lit red, uh, like a horror film. And, and other times it's a very natural looking light. So it's um, he's uh, pretty brilliant at, at what he does, and it's, it's so much fun for me to watch them uh, make each puzzle piece. He has a presence on screen that is uh, that is power. I mean, he's just a beautiful human being. When the camera gets on him, he's just um, he he glows, you know. So I I um, I'm really excited to see his his uh, performance here. I don't think I'm the only one that notices that um, a lot of what's coming out these days is a remake or a sequel or a, another version of something that we've already seen and and I'm always thirsty and hungry for um, original stories and um, this has that in spades and I'm it's part of the reason I wanted to be a part of it it's not something we've seen before Um, you know, I thought this was a great honor to work with this cast um, and with these incredible new writer-directors. You know, this is their first feature and um, it, it felt, uh, you know, I think these guys, Chris and Gerard, can go on and do incredible things. Um, and uh, they pulled together uh, some of the best people I've ever had the honor of working with. Um, funnily enough, me and Jenner have known each other since we were itty bitty things. Yeah, like uh, yeah. yeah, Jenner was uh, was I think her first, your first film, my aunt directed, Far Out of Carolina. Which boy, talk about a tour de force. I mean, that was uh, uh, Jenner as a little girl, what she had to go through in that movie. So I've always, I mean, since I was a child, wanted to work with her because it's funny how those things go full circle. And then obviously, the amazing. Janelle, Tongai, Kiersey, Gabby. I mean, like it just goes on and on and on. And Eric, and you know, it was um, it was a special um, it was a special coming together for something incredibly important. Yeah, um, it was. You know, when I first read the script, and I even sort of thought about taking on the role of Jasper. It was it was it, it was incredibly hard. It was a, it was a very hard decision, but it was a decision made much easier once I got on the phone with the filmmakers, and we discussed what this film was, what it meant, and how important and timely it was. Um, and very quickly, uh, the responsibility far outweighed the fear. And um, you know, I think. Um, you know, we, we as actors need to take risks 
especially if those risks are aimed and pointed and done for good. And I believe that if the message of this film succeeds, you know, it will spark conversation or spark discussion and hopefully lead to some good because I don't think you can watch this film without feeling a responsibility and a guilt and a shame for the hundreds of years that have come previous and actually how we haven't come that far and how the world is today and that we need to um, we need to come together right now and this is a very important time in the world. Yeah, I mean, this cast was pretty incredible. Um, but I, I mean, good material tends to attract, you know, really interesting actors. And I think um, having Janelle Monae on board from the beginning, um, I think all, you know, all the rest of us, I mean, I know about me, I was such a fan of her work and her, I felt like she was such an interesting poet and musician that I was just um, really excited to get to work with her. Um, yeah, it's interesting how um, when something when 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 it's important material, there's sort of like it's like a trauma bond, you know, where it's like e without even ever having a lot of time spent together, I feel like this cast went deep down to the barracks so quickly that we just sort of you know formed this sort of um, intimacy, this trust, this understanding that felt like we had known each other for a really long time. Um, it just gives me a really, uh, the fact that this film was made, you know, about two years ago, um, and it's being released during a time where we're experiencing, like, you know, the greatest social justice movement of our generation, um, you know, there's all these, uh, ties of, like, where police brutality, the roots of police brutality was sort of plantation owners, you know, I mean, there's so many, um, ties to this film that it just it actually gives me hope in knowing that as an artist um, this is the work that matters in changing and shifting human consciousness and um, and through these different embodiment techniques of storytelling and witnessing that we are able to form some sort of um, spiritual catharsis because I think that's really been denied a lot of this um, the people of this country because we have never formed collective grief rituals we have never you know reparations now um, I mean there's so many things that need to happen that I feel like because seeing how like Chris and Gerard uh, could perceive of something and they're sort of channeling and writing this story that can be so important two years from now just shows me how divine and important um, the work of filmmaking really is, you know. I think it was kind of like bound to happen. Um, Janelle has always been supportive of me and shown me love. Like one of my day ones within me being new to the industry, she was already Janelle Monet. And so she she's just always reached out to me and uh, we've always wanted to, and I've always reached back and we've always wanted to do something together. And this was just, a beautiful match from Gerard and Chris and um it was kismet it's yeah it's brilliant to watch her work and uh like Tungai said to expose her range to the world um it's cool that we get to be a part of that journey yeah oh I'm super I'm always so flattered and humbled when I get to, when, when we get to have conversation about creating and what we want to create, um, you know, separately and together. I mean, Gerard and Chris have always rooted for me and that support is like beyond anything an actor can ask for. 
um, on set. And like, not only did I get that, but I got the support of our amazing, the rest of the amazing cast and actors and background artists and everyone involved. It was just like the perfect environment for an actor to flourish and to give their all. Um, and what you see on screen is a result of that. Working with Janelle in this movie was magical. Okay, Janelle is a uh, icon living. Um, you know, she she's a leader in her own right. Um, you know, and just an, a very independent thinker, um, and, and as an advocate for all things uh, equality and justice. Um, so just to be uh, just to be you know working alongside a, di a dynamic force like that was just magical, um, and I'm very very excited to for the rest of the world to see what she's capable of doing um, as this this is her first like lead role where she carries a film. And I mean, she carries this thing like she's the veteran that she always has been. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to see her, uh, you know, her range to be exposed to the rest of the world. And, you know, you can't pigeonhole a visionary like Janelle. So exciting times. Mm. Yeah, I, and I'll, I will speak to, uh, you know, uh, uh, their artistic approach, man. They are they are amazing visionaries. Um, you know, I like to call them prophets because, you know, they constantly on the pulse, you know, and just kind of like, you know, ahead of the curve when it comes to uh, the social dynamics in, 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 in America. Um, but they have this unique way of, of telling a story with just color and and imagery you know and then they compile that with just the music that they are able to intermix with what they're doing so they're one of the few people that you know seeing some of the work that they did previously where i was moved just by the visuals you know i, I was more intentionally looking at the moving picture than i was to the uh, the spoken word or the music that was playing and i think that's testament to the ability as a filmmaker to do something or to make something that takes you away just by seeing it, you know, and then it's amplified by uh, the sound that they then incorporate into their work. So, um, and also there's something to be said about the unknown, you know, first time directors, um, you know, they are risk takers, they're constantly pushing the boundary. And I think this, this film is one such where you know, I think their their mantra throughout was like, look, we're going to have to do this and if we're going to do it. We have to do it right. So, you know, there was no holding back in anything that they wanted to see on screen. You know, so it was either go big or go home and then mm -hmm. all out. You know, it's funny that, you know, we keep talking about the significance of it when, you know, it's been significant for 400 years <laughs> you know the, the the themes uh you know and i'll tell you this like you know as a zimbabwean growing up uh you know with some of the history that we learned you know we we always knew that there was there was something going on in america between the blacks and the whites you know the stories and the films that we watched back then you know uh how black people were constantly depicted as some type of stereotype and all these kind of things so it's nothing new it's nothing new and i think maybe we should start changing the narrative of the ongoing you know that maybe if we start changing and, and start speaking about you know the changes that need to take place right now because you know there's something to be said there's power in what we say you know so if it's ongoing it can be ongoing for the next 20 30 40 50 60 years you know change is imminent change needs to happen now uh, because with the themes and what's happening now, you, you know, you cannot, you cannot acknowledge the truth that's in front of your face. You know, if you choose to ignore it, you know, you're ignorant. And, you know, if you choose not to do something about the, 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 the truth that's in front of you, you know, you choose to be arrogant, you know, so what are you going to do? Because ultimately there's a problem and we need to fix it.
because mm. these films are our way of expressing our hurt and pain that we've so often faced you know and this the film and and art is one way of expressing that from from the music that we used to you know that rap and how that was born out of a need to express their frustration because you know i guess the the systems in place wouldn't allow for african americans to make the changes that were needed to better you know the communities that we live in you know and art is one way to formally express to the rest of the world and to the rest of america that hey things are not right so these themes are very important and will continue to be important until these fundamentals are addressed